ready to get into the, the scriptures this morning? Praise God. Are you believing God with me? Amen. Amen. I tell you, I'm excited. Well, we've been talking around here the last, uh, uh, last while, and we've been on a general theme of what stirs you, what stirs us. And so we've been setting out just some vision for the church and, and some uh, different uh, uh, important aspects of who we are as a congregation. And, and uh, you know, Pastor Amy and I uh, um, assumed the position of senior pastors uh, back in April. So it's important that you hear from us, you know, our, where, we're, where we're at and what the Lord's, how the Lord is leading us. And these are not things that you've not heard before, but it's important that we stay aware of these yeah. things. And the scripture back in May that I read is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. This is the New King James, 2 Timothy 1, verse 6. And this was uh, Paul writing to Timothy. And he said, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And so he was encouraging him to stir these things up. And that word, that phrase to stir up just means to awake from sleep, to arouse, to activate the mind and understanding, to rekindle. And so these are things that are truths that, uh, and, and foundational uh, topics and truths of our church. And so we want to make sure that we are not living based upon what we knew, but what, what we know and what's clear and on and, and the forefront of our attention. And uh, so these are important things I trust you've been ministered to and blessed by it, but this is a great way for us together to make sure we're on the same page. And so we want to stir you up on these things. What's important to us as a church? What's important to us as individuals? Because that is connected. Our individual lives and our, our, our church lives are intermingled. And so we need to make sure that we're pursuing this with everything we have. It's not good to partition our life. And to live one way in this area when it's your private life and live another way when it's your church life. It should all be the same because it's all one life that we're living for the Lord. So it should encompass everything we do. So the, the topics that we're discussing should be things that motivate us not on Sunday morning, not only on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, but in Monday morning and Monday afternoon and Monday night and throughout the week. These, this, are, this is our foundation. We want to give you vision. We had read the scripture in, uh, in, in Proverbs that where there is is no vision, the people perish. And so we want to make sure we see what the Lord has for us, not just be able to quote it, but or rattle off who we are as a church or who I am as a believer, but you see it, you know what it means, you know how to cooperate with it, and you see it in your life. And of course, these topics, we've not been able to discuss everything uh, involved in it. You'll find with me, uh, uh, like my father, I'm a, I'm a series guy, and I try my best to, to do uh, one and done's every now and then. It just doesn't work for me. I, 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 it's, not my, it's not my thing. So um, I've been trained well. And so I'm trying to, to, to limit the, 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 the amount of things that we're talking about just to kind of keep it concise and keep moving. But we have series that we're doing. So these are individual series that, uh, that we're doing. So trust has been good, to, good for you. Amen. So the last several weeks, we, just, we finished up talking about being stirred by the Word of God, God's Word. The Word of God is our foundation. And we can't go back and won't go back and preach everything, but it's the foundation of our church. The entrance of His Word brings light. It brings understanding. And if we're not allowing the Word of God access or entrance into your life, how can you live life? How can you function and maneuver and, and accomplish the will of God? And so God's word is vital for us if we're going to live our lives well and run this life, this race well, and enter into eternity prepared for what's next. We need to know what God's word says about right now and walk in these things. Thank God we have his scriptures, we have his word, we have Jesus revealed, and we have access to it all the time. I, I trust at the end of this, this last se section, that your appreciation for God's Word has grown, and I trust you're spending time reading the Word, meditating on God's Word. It's life to those who find Him. The Bible says that you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so that's where you find the truth, is in God's Word, and it will change your life, but you've got to give Him an opportunity to speak through his word into your life. If you do it, God will show up. And so we're thankful for that. And, and uh, one of the things we talked about, uh, you know, is the fact that as a church, we're going to maintain a adherence to the word of God and a bold adherence to the word of God. You know, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So we, we, we will always be a place, always have been, 
always will be a place where we take God at his word and we are not ashamed of what the gospel says, what the Bible says. We're not, we're not adding to it. We're not taking away from it. We want to, to the best of our ability and the best of our understanding, present the full counsel of, of the word. So that's a place for you to expect that, Amen. but also be believing God with us on the same thing as well. So are you with us? Well, this morning I want to move on to um, the next uh, part of of this, and we don't have a lot of time, so I'm kind of going to introduce this, but uh, we're going to talk about for this week, and and of course, obviously, Brother Greer will be here. Greer will be here. Too many R's there. He'll be here next week, so after that, we'll pick it back up, but we're going to talk about being stirred by the Spirit. Anybody stirred by the Spirit? Now, I know we had a lot of kids up here. We went through a lot of different formalities. This is such a big, big thing. And being stirred, part of that is being excited, yeah. being, being, being motivated, right? And, and when you're stirred about something, what does it mean? You are excited about it. You are passionate about it. So we're passionate about vision. We're passionate about God's word, but we are also passionate. We're stirred by the Spirit. Are you with me? Yeah. Let your face know that you're stirred by the Spirit this morning, right? We, we, it, it, you know, with all of these things, what you're moved by, what you're stirred by, what you're excited by, what you're consumed with is a choice that you make. It doesn't just happen because it's out there. It doesn't just happen because it's available. It's a choice. It's a decision that you make. There are many distractions and there are many things that are vying for your attention, but you have to make sure you put it in the right place. Right. Have you ever had something on a Saturday? You had things that you had to do. Well, it, you, ever been there? you have a list of things you need to accomplish. If you aren't purposeful on that Saturday, if you aren't purposeful in that day, how many know the time will go by and all these other things will come up that, that, have to be done that are so important and then when you're done at the end of the day you realize I didn't accomplish anything none of those things really mattered and the things that I needed to do are still sitting right there well let's not live our Christian life in a place where everything is distracting us and we're being stirred and motivated by the news and by this and by that what does God say is important what does his word say well we need to be stirred and activated and passionate about those things. And one of those is the Spirit. We are stirred by the Spirit. Now, we had said when talking about uh, the Word of God, we, we started off, we're a Word church. Well, shortly after that, uh, that changed. We started saying we're a Word and Spirit church because it requires both. We need the Word of God, but then we also need the Spirit of God moving. Now, when I say Spirit, that we're stirred by the Spirit, am I talking about, you know, excitement? Or am I talking about, uh, uh, I got spirit, yes I do, I got spirit, how about you, right? Any ex-cheerleaders in the room? Any ex-cheerleaders? No. <laughs> Would you like to lead us in a cheer? She wouldn't even look up at me. All right, now she's just smiling. All right, I got a smile out of her, praise God. I got spirit, yes, is that what we're talking about? Now there is a part of that, that when we come together, when we discuss these things, there ought to be some excitement to us. There ought to be excitement to us. You know, when you read the parable of the sower, one of the seeds that was sown, it said they received the word with, anybody know the next word? It said with gladness. Not sadness or madness, but they received it with gladness. It means they were joyful that something was getting deposited in their life. So we should be excited. We're, we're in the best group that there is. I'm not just saying Impact Family Church, because, but you do know it's, it's, you're in the best place where the Lord puts you, right? As far as locally. But, but as far as being members of the body of Christ, we're in, we're in the middle of and a part of the best thing going. Amen. We're, in, we're, a, we're members of and part, parts of the, the ruling class for the ages. The Bible said, well, I don't know if I like that. That seems kind of elitist. God has made us elite. We will rule and reign with him throughout the ages, and we can rule and reign in life. Amen. Amen. But you've got to be excited about these things. Listen, whatever you're not excited about is not real to you. Come on. Yeah, that's whatever is not whatever is lacking excitement in your life is not real to you. Husbands, wives, if you want your marriage to be, to, to be powerful and be meaningful, be excited about being married. Don't be checking the door. Be excited about the spouse that the Lord has given you, right? I mean, what you're excited about, you will enjoy. And so we want to maintain, yes, a spirit. We want to have that. That's good, but that's not what we're referring to. We're referring to being stirred by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God. We, what? 
What a blessing it is to have the Spirit of God. Woo! Praise God. He is awesome. Woo! Praise God. I said, he's awesome. You know, when I was getting ready and, and trying to, I told Amy this morning, I was like, you know, I'm trying not to do a long draw, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, with each one of these, but there's certain topics that are just hard to, to, to not, to, to limit what you're saying. You know, I mean, the Holy Spirit is amazing. I mean, what a privilege that we have to have God, the Holy Spirit, it is, it is, what makes us different, what makes us different is who we have. Not only who we belong to, but who belongs to us. Woo, praise God. Now on Sunday nights, the last, not, not, the la, not last week, but here recently, we've talked about uh, God, the Holy Spirit. And we wanted to just kind of give uh, some insight onto who he is. And he's not, the fe- he's not a feeling. He's not goosebumps. He's, he's, not, he's not spooky or scary. I said he's not spooky or scary. Now, the, part of the reason why we talk about these things is because we need to know these things for ourselves so that when people want to challenge us, not that we're getting into a debate with somebody. That, you know, how many know debating doesn't really do anything? We need to be led by the Spirit when we have these conversations. But we need to know what the Word says, but not just know what the Word says, experience what the Word says. Yeah. And so the Holy Spirit, he's a real individual. He's not a feeling. I said on that, those Sunday, night, Sunday nights, I said, he's not the force. Right. Oh, he's not the force. Yeah. You know, he's not this thing that we, it's not, he's not that. He is God, yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yes. Say, so, okay, what's the big deal? He's God. He's not, he's not the other guy. He's not the, the third wheel of the Godhead. He is fully God. Yeah. So well, how does that work? You have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. No, we're, like I said, we're, we're introducing some things. And if you weren't here on, on Sunday nights, this is good for you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He is a separate, I don't want to say person. He is a separate individual. He's not a human being, but he's a separate, separate pers- person. Some people say a separate personality. He's more than just a personality. He's a real, distinct, specific being. Yeah. And yet he's not the Father. He's not the Son. He's the Holy, God, the Holy Spirit. And yet they're all God. Right. You say, well, that's kind of confusing. Well, it's not when you realize and are aware of the fact that you are a three-part being. Most people are only aware of this and this. But the reality is you are a spirit being. Your spirit, the real you, is an eternal being. He's been made, he's been, he has been made in the image of God. The Bible says that God is a spirit. And we know in Genesis that God made man in his image. He created all the birds and the animals and all that stuff. But man, he formed his body out of, out of the dirt, out of the clay. And then he what? He breathed life into the... He didn't breathe life into Fido. He commanded Fido to live, but he breathed life into mankind. What was that? That was part of himself, part of a spirit being. He deposited a spirit inside that shell. Really, it wasn't so much about the shell. It was about what he did, what he breathed in. What is that? It, you're a spirit. Fido doesn't live forever, but you will. Fido doesn't have contact with God. You do. Why? Because he's a spirit. You're a spirit. And so we're a spirit being, we're an eternal being, but yet we live in a body. And we have a soul. Some people think soul means spirit. Soul means your mind, your will, and emotions. Well, you can just, let's put spirit aside. Maybe this is new to you. Put spirit aside for a second. Do you recognize that body and soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, they're different? They're different, right? You can want to do something. You can have a will to do something. And yet physically not be able to do it. Right? right? Yeah. You, can, you can physically want to do something or have a desire to do something. And yet on your, your emotions would tell you not to do something. Yeah. They're independent. They, they're connected because they're, 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 they're all you. Your body is you as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Your body is you. Your emotions, your, your mind, your will, it's you as well. Yet they're different. They function in different areas. They do different things. They have, they have different voices. They have different agendas, right? 
And that's why we need to be led by the spirit, realize that we're spirit beings because that's the only one you can trust is the one that's been created if you're born again. Now, if a person's not born again, they're a spirit being, but they're spiritually dead. So what, what, what does spiritually dead mean? Well, spiritually dead doesn't mean that they're, they don't exist. It means they've been cut off from the life of God. It means they have no part in the life, the nature of God. So every person alive is a spirit being. Every human being that's ever lived, ever will live, they are a spirit being. They are eternal. They're going to go somewhere. They're going to, they're, they're, they, they're going to exist forever. And the reality is their body and their, their emotions are going to be with them as well. well how, does that, how does that work? Well, right now, we, we all know people that have gone home to be, to be with the Lord and their physical body is here. It, it's been left here, but how many know that's not the final, that's not the end of the story. We're all going to get uh, glorified bodies that will never die. They will, they'll never grow old. They will never wear out. Well, you do realize that those who don't know Jesus, who've not accepted life, they, the, their body may be in the ground here for now as well, but one day they're going to receive a glorified body that will never die. Yet same, but at the same time, their experience physically is going to be very different than ours. It's a horrible thing to think about. So, so what, what's the point? We need to learn to be led by the Spirit because where the Spirit goes of a man or a woman, what, this, what happens to the Spirit, the life that the Spirit experiences or participates with determines what the body and the, the soul, the mind, will, and emotions will experience now and forever. It's sobering, but that's the good news that we have and we have the opportunity to present that, listen, we can have a life, a future, an eternity with the creator of everything good. We're going to be with him. And so God is a three-part being, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're all, they are one and yet they're joined together. And one of the things that we need to be stirred about, one of the individuals we need to be stirred about, Jesus, we know Jesus and his word, they're one. John 1 talks about the, in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. So we have, we have the revelation of Jesus here. How many know that you and your words can't be separated? Well, Jesus, you do know you and your word can't be separated. Your words are who you are, right? Well, this is also who Jesus is. So this, we have Jesus here and if, as we, as we, learn this and meditate on these things, we actually come to know the author and the one who said these things. But at the same point, we want to be stirred by the Spirit. And it's 1150 already. My goodness. <laughs> the, I'm, I, people say, I, I have to tell you, I'm so excited to talk about the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit. And I, and I said on the Sunday nights, I, I kept referring to him as God, the Holy Spirit. Not to, not to create a new, a new way we always have to say God the Holy Spirit anytime we refer to him. Because in scriptures he's referred to as the Holy Spirit. But I, I was doing that to, to make an emphasis to the fact that he's not a feeling. He is God the Holy Spirit. And I'm so excited to talk about him. It's, 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 a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to talk about the Holy Spirit. And to have insight and understanding and who he is and what he does and what he has to offer and how amazing. I mean, that's a privilege. You know, so many people don't have that. They don't know anything about him. They're not aware of him. And what happens? They're not experiencing him in, in their life. We, we know him and we can experience him. Whew. That, was a good, that was a good place to say amen right there. We can know him and experience him. So I'm excited to talk about it. I guess this is just a long introduction this morning. We'll get back to it. But I know people might say, well, you know, the Holy Spirit is something that, yes, I, I, we believe in the Holy Spirit. We should be careful, though, what we say about the Holy Spirit. And I just want to say this off the bat and up front. We, we need not be careful about talking about the Holy Spirit. Remember, we're, we're people that love the Word of God. And the Word of God has a lot to say about God, the Holy Spirit. A lot of wonderful things to say about God the Holy Spirit. You know, I've had people say, well, you know, there, there's, been a, there's been a movement. Uh, and, and well, really, this movement has died out because it didn't work. Imagine that. But there was this movement, the seeker friendship, Seeker friendly. Seeker friendly movement. It's not seeker friendship. I don't know what that is. If you see it, run. It sounds terrible. Uh, seeker friendly movement where churches... And it's, it started amongst churches that were open to the Holy Spirit. And it was a way, a, a method, an idea 
that they came up with to, to grow their churches and to be more appealing to those who are lost. Now, right there, you can, remember the last couple weeks we talked about the fact there was this group called the Nicolaitans that in Revelations Jesus says he hated. And one of the things that they did was they, they changed what they talked about and how they did things to appeal to the masses and they accepted in certain things, ways of thinking and, and all sorts of immorality and all sorts of stuff. But, but they, they accepted these things in so that they could be more palatable to the people that, are, that, that, that need the gospel. And Jesus said, I hate those things. Well, there was this movement amongst these churches that if we'll, we will preach the word. We'll preach a happy word. We'll preach a happy message. Thank God for happy messages. I like the mean messages, Patrick. No, I, 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 like, I like happy messages. Thank God for happy messages. Today's a happy message, right? It, it's always a happy message, right, when it's, when it's the word. But, but sometimes messages can be a little, ugh, right? We need those, ugh, moments. What is that? That means stow tepping, toe stepping. I, 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 apparently, I'm developing <laughs> dyslexia this morning. Shabbat Y'all pray for me. No, they're, they're toe-stepping. We need those things. Discipline is a wonderful thing. Things that challenge us are wonderful. Why, why does God challenge us? Because he wants us to move up, to look more like him, so we can, what, live more like him. Yeah. And so we need those things. But they said, let's, let's take those issues and those topics. Let's not talk about sin. Let's not talk about sin anymore. Let, sin is a bad word. Let's not, let's not, sin makes people uncomfortable. Sin should make you uncomfortable. That's the problem. Too many people are comfortable with sin. If you didn't know it, that's a problem. Go back and listen to the scriptures we read the last two weeks. The people who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You need to know that. But they didn't want to talk about these things because that might offend somebody, might run them off. The blood of Jesus was not discussed. Because the blood is kind of gory, it's kind of gross. Talking about the blood. People aren't bothered by blood, they're going to see movies full of it. Right? Instead of glorifying that kind of blood, let, let's glorify the blood of Jesus that was poured out for you and me. That forever speaks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, praise God. We... we, we I'm not ashamed of the blood of Jesus. It saved my soul. It cleansed me of my sin. Are you kidding me? Basically, let's take the power, the life-changing truth out of our message and just try to talk somebody into doing something. That's crazy. That, that is what Paul talked about. The, that, those are doctrines of demons. Well, that's kind of severe. Anything that belittles the word of God and belittles Jesus Christ or anything about the Godhead is a doctrine of demons. And so they said the blood of the blood. We're not going to talk about the blood. One of the things we won't talk about is the Holy Spirit because it scares people. How many, if you don't know, if you've not figured this out yet, the enemy is after things that matter. I said the enemy is after things that matter. He's after things that are important. If you haven't noticed this as well, our adversary, the devil, is pretty crafty. He's not a bumbling idiot. He's actually very smart. So are you glorifying the devil? No, he's still defeated. You can be smart and still be a loser. And that's exactly who he is, right? He is a loser. He's already lost. But he wants you to think that he hasn't. And so what to, to, in order for us to not use our victory and walk in the victory, he wants us to bail on and to back away from and be ashamed of or afraid to talk about the things that matter. There is nothing more important than the integrity of God's word, the 100% absoluteness of every single word that was inspired by the Spirit of God, Our, the Word of God, the Scriptures, there is nothing more important than that. Yeah. Nothing more important than that. There is nothing more important than the Holy Spirit. And for churches to not talk about this, it, it, it is aiding the enemy. 
Well, I know a church. I know churches. They never talk about the Holy Spirit. They never discuss it. They wait and, and they do that in the back room. And, and, and it's in the back room somewhere to not run people off. We've, I've heard these, these words. And so we put that, they put that in the back and they, and the, and they kind of hide it and they talk about it when a person wants to go deep. Everybody say deep. deep. Yeah, it's weird, right? When a person wants to go deep, then we'll talk about the Holy Spirit. And, and, they're, and they're winning all of these people. They're introducing all these people to Jesus. I ask you, are they? Now, it's not my job to question as far as a person's decision that they make, that's between them and the Lord. But I do know this, there is something called cultural Christianity. I said there's something called cultural Christianity. I mean, it's a label, it's not a life. Right? It is a moniker, it's not, it's not, it's not a, I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know what rhymes with them, right? But it, it's not, it's not, it hasn't moved you into change in your life. It hasn't done anything. So there is a cultural gospel that's being preached and it makes people feel good which reaches one part of who they are, their emotions. And oftentimes it gives people permission to do what they want which also makes something else feel good called the flesh. But it leaves the real them unchanged which is the spirit. Only God's word and God the Holy Spirit, because they're tied together. They're different, but they're one. Only those two can change the real person. When we push him off into a room and don't talk about him, we are cutting the power. We're cutting the power off. We're limiting the effectiveness of God's word, of the, of the reality what Jesus has done. So I question, are they creating converts or fans? Are they creating converts or people that are cultural believers? As, as the pastor, I will not stand before the Lord. As pastor, I will not stand before the Lord on, in, in terms of my assignment and, and, and run the risk of having created a bunch of cultural Christians who maybe did a lot of good stuff. But spiritually, eternally, they were dead. They were separated. <sighs> Can I tell you this? God gave us, the Father planned all of this out. He gave us his word, Jesus, and he gave us his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And can I assure you of this? Our Father, our Master Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit loves people more than we do. Yeah. Yeah. So he loves people far more than we do. In fact, he invested everything he had to rescue humanity. How could it be that a part of himself would be offensive and turn people away? It's not possible. He said it's not possible. The Holy Spirit is amazing. He's so important in our lives. Thank God we're a word church that loves the word of God. But thank God we're a church that honors reverences, makes room to the Holy Spirit. That's, that's who we've always been. It's, it's going to be who we always are. I can tell you this right now. It will not keep people from being reached. I said it will not keep people from being reached. I said it will not keep people from being reached. Don't be ashamed of this gift that you have. This gift of the Holy Spirit, he has been given to us. We'll talk more in the uh, coming weeks about it. I'm so excited. I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit. Woo, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. So grateful that we have him. And I trust at the end of this, you're going to be stirred by him. You're going to be stirred in your love, affection, appreciation, reverence, honor, dependence. You want, you want to make us dependent, you better believe it. The reality is you're already dependent. You just, if, if you didn't know it, you're already dependent. He's who you need. You need the word and you need him. You need him. You need him. The other side of it is that he needs us. How awesome is that? That God, the Holy Spirit, needs you and me. <laughs> Woo, praise God. We'll get into it. Stand with me. Hallelujah.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Jisa Zodava. And I just hear the Holy Spirit saying, as we embark on this series, I will teach you, because I am the teacher, I will teach you how to cultivate a dependency upon me in your daily life. And as you learn of me and as you listen to the word of God and meditate on the things that are released, I will take them and cause them to become alive to you. And I'll teach you and show you step by step how to develop in this lifestyle where you and I are working together as covenant partners, working and moving and flowing together and it will affect your personal walk it'll affect your intimacy with me it'll show and reveal Jesus and the Father to you but it also will flow out of you and into others lives because as you're walking in greater intimacy with me you will be able to demonstrate me to those that you come in contact with so take heed to what's about to be embarked on and take diligent notes in your heart and on the paper and look and meditate over the things that are taught for I will reveal to you the things you need to know for this season hallelujah thank you 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 Lord hallelujah 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 Lord we'll do just that hallelujah we'll do just that we'll do just that Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Be believing God with us. Becoming ready to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Amen. Hallelujah. This is, this is a part of what stirs us. <laughs> this is a part of who stirs us. This is who we are, church. This is who we are. Hallelujah. And it's the answer that this world needs. Amen. He's the answer. He's part of the answer that this world needs. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good.